E.G. Marshall, come in through the mysterious door which hides the secrets and sometimes horrors we dare not even think about, but which are nevertheless brought to the forefront of our imagination by the tale you're about to hear. A door, a simple door, shuts us out or lets us into a room. But such a room as we are to visit now is one perhaps we'd be better off avoiding. At least Stephanie Miller would have been better off if she'd never set foot in it again. Or would she? Maybe that was her destiny. And who can question what the fates have decreed? Mrs. Lanning, would you mind awfully if I just sat here in the room a moment alone? Of course not. I'll go down and make some tea. Oh, please don't bother. No bother at all. (laughs) You're very kind. Sit here and take your time. Come down when you're ready. My dear, dear room. You look so different. I really don't like your yellow wallpaper. And there's no rug. Your floor must be cold. (laughs) Oh, it's just like old times, talking to my old room. Talking. I don't understand why Mrs. Lanning doesn't like you. Our mystery drama, Stephanie's Room, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Bob Juran and stars Mercedes McCambridge. It is sponsored in part by Contact, the 12-hour cold capsule, and Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Our story begins in a modern tract home in a Los Angeles suburb. Stephanie and Tom Miller are an average couple. Tom's on his way up in his advertising career. And for both of them, it means some sacrifices. I may be a little late tonight, Steph. I uh, have some things to clear up on the Rogers account. Well, that's okay. Now, now look, honey, before you get upset, I got to tell you sometime. Oh, Tom, does this mean another move? Steph, it's my best chance, yet it's New York City, the home office. I'll go in as ad director, a a vice presidency in two years, no more than three. Uh, Look, it's the start of a whole new life. Tom, we came to Los Angeles chasing rainbows and vice presidencies. And before that, it was Chicago. Honestly, we've had three different homes in five years. This will be the last, I promise. Well, your career is important, but I'm so tired of living out of a barrel. I know, I know. Look, we'll live anywhere you want. Maybe even your old hometown, if you like. Uh, Wasn't it in the suburbs? In Crestwood, yes. All right. Now, Steph, I swear to you, if anything does go sour on this deal, I won't move again. I'll take my chances in New York and we'll stay. All right, Tom. It would be nice to see the old house again. You know, Steph, looking down on New York like this, I I feel as though we're on top of the world. Mm Mm-hmm. But let's get settled soon, Tom. Oh, sure, sure. We'll house hunt every weekend. I don't like this hotel room any more than you do. Listen, I thought I might take a run up to Crestwood tomorrow. It's only 35 minutes by train. Sure, why don't you? Well, I mean, I'd like to see it, you know. See what's changed since I was a child. And see the old house. I wonder who's living there now. Well, maybe they'll let you in and show you around. Oh, I couldn't ask that. I'll just stroll around. Well, you can at least ask. After all, you did live there. Yes? Good morning. Uh... I'm not selling anything, really. Oh, what is it you want? (laughs) Well, I know this may sound foolish. Uh, My name is Stephanie Miller, and I grew up in this house until I was 14. And I, uh, 
I wanted to see it again, you know, to see if it had changed and who was living here now. Oh, well, my husband isn't home at the moment. I, oh, I... well, that's all right. I understand. It's preposterous of me to ask. It's okay. I'll, I'll just look around outside if you don't mind. No, I don't mind that. Um... How long has it been since you've seen the house? Oh, it's 15 years. See, we've been living in Los Angeles, and uh, my husband's firm transferred him here to New York so that when I was this close, I just couldn't resist coming back. Uh, Stephanie Miller, you said? Yeah. Well, come in, Mrs. Miller. I don't see the harm. I'm Mrs. Lanning. Oh, thank you. I imagine it's changed a lot since you lived here. No, no, not that much, really. Oh, your furniture is different, of course, but I remember this room so well. Oh, I love that table. It was my mother's. And the fireplace. <laughs> I used to sit in my pajamas on cold winter nights and watch the pictures in the embers. I saw tigers fighting <laughs> and flowers and monkeys and horses. <laughs> you too. Oh, I love the fireplace. Hey, I wonder. What is it? Well... It really couldn't still be here, but... What are you looking for? <laughs> there was a penny. I put it up in a crack in the chimney when I was ten years old for good luck, you know. And I think I can just about reach it. Ha, 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 ha. Yes, I can hardly believe it. It's still here. Look. What? Isn't that amazing? Oh, golly. <laughs> well, do you like the house, Mrs. Lanning? Oh, I do, except... For what? Oh, nothing, really. Now, come on, you want to see the kitchen. Okay. Oh, how charming, Mrs. Lanning. Thank you. Yeah. Of course, we didn't have the breakfast nook. My mother had a big oak table right here in the middle of the floor. Well, I like room to move around. And everything happened at that old oak table. Mom and Daddy'd sit there every night and they'd talk. And I can almost see my mother making her Christmas strudel now. <laughs> All of those family conferences. I was always included in the minor decisions. Oh, you were an only child then? Yes. Gee, may I... May I see upstairs? I'd love to see my old room. Well, yes, if you like. <laughs> Mr. Lanning and I use the front bedroom. Well, mine was the small one facing the back. That's our, well, guest room. We don't use it at all. You're sure you don't mind if I look? Oh, of course not. We don't have any children to bring grandchildren visiting, and we never have overnight company, but it's still the guest room. Oh, it's very pretty. Oh, I was going to use it for a sewing room, but... But what? <laughs> Nothing. Is it the same thing you hesitated about downstairs? Well, yes. I... I've never been able to use this room. Why? Well, I feel as though... As though I'm not wanted. I'm not welcome in this room. But this is your house. Why wouldn't you be welcome? Well, I'm not sure any house is ours. We live in them, use them. But there are some things we can't ever own. Oh, I love this room. I even used to talk to it. Really. And Mother had white curtains with little bluebells all over them and, and a bedspread to match. And uh, my dresser was over here, right next to the window. And then I had a little white chair. Don't... D don't you feel it? Feel what? With strangeness in here. As though we didn't belong here. Mrs. Lanning, would you mind awfully if I just sat here alone for a moment to remember? Why, of course not. I'll go down and make some tea. Oh, please don't bother me. Oh, it's no bother at all. I'm enjoying the cup. <laughs> you're very kind. You take your time. Come down when you're ready. You do look different. I really don't like that yellow wallpaper. And there's no rug. Your floor must be cold. 
<laughs> yes, it's just like old times, talking in my room, talking. I don't understand why Mrs. Lanning doesn't like to. <laughs> Why so quiet, Helen? I wasn't going to tell you about what happened today, but I must. A woman who used to live here as a girl came to the house today, and she wanted to see it again. And you let her in? Now, Will, she was a sweet, young... Oh, wait a minute. She asked to see the house with a story about having lived here? Yes. Well, don't you know what she was? A con artist. Oh. Oh, she used that story to get into the house. She looks around and makes note of anything valuable, and next time we're away, poof, she and her accomplice rip us off. Oh, now, Will, she wasn't anything like that. Oh, yes, so naive, Helen. No, she remembered a penny she'd put in the fireplace chimney, and she reached in and pulled it right out. Oh, sure, sure. She had it in her hand all the time. It was a trick. Well, she knew her room. The, the one I can't stand. Oh? Huh? That was her room, was it? Yes, and she described just how it looked when she was a child. I'm calling the police. Uh, no, wait, Will. Now listen to me. After she left, I went up to that room. <sighs> Something strange happened there. Oh, hell. I man. mean it. There's a totally different feel to that room. I don't know what it is. But it's as though the room were alive. Is that you, Steph? Tom! You home already? Yeah, we finished up early on that field trip to New Jersey. How was Crestwood? I take it you went. Yes, I went. Oh, you don't sound enthused. Who's living there now? Oh, there's a retired couple. I only met the woman. She was very nice. Oh, Steph, what's the matter? Were you were you disappointed? No, not disappointed. I was puzzled. About what? Well, I went up to my old room, and I sat there for a while, and I had the oddest feeling that the room remembered me, that it didn't want me to leave. How many rooms really can't remember? And then, then all the way home on the train, I kept thinking, knowing, really, that I have to go back there again. I'll be back tomorrow night. All right, Will. I'll be here. Well, don't look so down in the dumps. This isn't the first fishing trip I've been on. Now, Will, I didn't say anything. Lord knows, retirement's boring enough. You don't expect me to sit in a rocking chair for the rest of my life. No, I don't. Uh, if only we'd had... Uh, no, I promised I'd never say that again. But you think it. And I feel it. But we've stuck together, Will, even without children. There must be something for us. I'll, uh, I'll be back tomorrow around six. Mm-hmm. I'll have dinner ready. And listen, Helen, if that woman comes around here again, don't let her in. Call the police. All right, whatever you say. Oh, good luck. Bring home a trout dinner. <laughs> If only we'd had... If only we'd had... Our whole lives have been nothing but if only. If only I could make Will believe me about the room. I know there's something different there. Something happened when that girl came back here. Stephanie's room... How many happy hours did she have here? How many tears? How many hopes? 
When the fire was open, the birds began to sing. Now wasn't that a dainty dish to set before the king? Backward, turn backward, O oh time in thy flight. Make me a child again, just for tonight. The poet's words strike a note in all of us who wish for a touch of childhood again. When the world gets weary and our own hopes aren't quite as bright as they were once, childhood looks awfully good. But beware, all of you who would turn backward. You'll see what I mean when I return shortly with Act Two. Another poet and novelist, Thomas Wolfe, told us, you can't go home again. Nothing stays the same. And the old familiar things just aren't as we remembered them. And how often they proved to be so disappointing. But for Stephanie Miller, going home again, rather to the house in which she had once lived, was proving to be a compelling experience. Mrs. Lanning, this is Stephanie Miller. Oh, hello. Hello. I really hate to impose, but I wondered if I could come out just one more time to see my old room. Well, now, my husband... Well, I don't want to intrude. Just, you know, any time that's convenient. Well, then, why don't you come today? My husband's away on a fishing trip. Yes, come today. <laughs> Come in, Mrs. Miller. I'm really glad to see you. Thank you. And please, call me Stephanie. All right. Come on in the kitchen. I have coffee and... And strudel. <laughs> oh. It's only from the supermarket, but you told me how your mother used to make it. Yeah, at Christmas time. Always at Christmas time. Oh, how very thoughtful of you, Mrs. Lanning. Now slide into the nook there and we'll have our coffee. Okay. You can stay as long as you like. <laughs> You know, I didn't think I was going to see you again. My husband did, though. He thought you were a con artist. Oh, what? Oh, he thought you made up the story about living in the house just to get in. To see if we had anything valuable to steal. Oh, he didn't. Really? <laughs> but I know differently. I know you lived here in that room. Mm-hmm. Could we go up now? Well, of course. Bring your coffee along. I feel so peaceful in this room. Really, it's almost as though I'd never been away. My husband won't believe there's a change in the room. Do you know that I was never afraid of the dark in this room? Mama would put the lights out, and then I'd begin to see the shadows start to form, and they were always friendly shadows. Listen, do you hear anything, Mrs. Lanning? Hear anything? Yeah, a sort of sound. I don't know, it comes and goes. No. I heard it the other day when I was here. Stephanie, you were happy here, weren't you? Oh, yes. And then this room was a happy room. You know, I think, I think that the room is glad to see you. Well, I suppose if we love a house or a room, it just naturally has love in it. Mm, responds, Stephanie. It responds. That's why I want you to come and visit any time you want. Mm. You love this room. And your presence, it changes things. Well, that's kind of you, Mrs. Lanning. But I guess this will be the last time, for a while at least... Tom and I have so much to do, you know, finding our own place and getting settled. But I tell you what, after I'm settled, I'll drop out maybe once a month or so to visit. Oh, I hope it's sooner. Will, breakfast ready. Be right there. Uh, uh. What? I'll be done. When did she do that? Uh, say, Helen, uh, when did you change the drapes in the guest room? What? 
Well, you changed the drapes in the guest room, didn't you? Well, no, they're the ones we've always had. Oh, that's funny. They look different. Oh, I admit I'm not as observant as you'd like me to be. Maybe they were gray all along. Gray? That's what they look like to me. Well, they're chartreuse. Well, maybe they faded from the sun. But it's not a big issue. Forget I mentioned it. After breakfast, I'm going to march you upstairs and show you the difference between gray and chartreuse. I... I don't understand. Well, they look faded to me. Well, maybe they were chartreuse. Uh... Come to think of it, wallpaper looks different, too. Wasn't it more of a gold color? Yes, but that could fade, too. I know. You never liked this room. Well, what's the difference? We never use it, anyway. Close the door and let's forget it. Yes. Why don't we do that? Let's not worry about it. So glad you came, Stephanie. Do you remember what color the drapes and walls were in the guest room when you were here last? Yes, I'm afraid I do. And I'm afraid that I didn't... Well, I mean, it just isn't my style. What were they? Well, the drapes are chartreuse, and the walls are sort of gold. Good. That's what I wanted to know. Come with me to the room. Why, what is it, Mrs. Lanning? I think you're in for a surprise... After you see the room. Oh, this is so mysterious. Oh, you'll see. Oh, Mrs. Lanning. Where did you ever find them? Why, I I, I didn't. But they're my drapes. White with bluebells. They're exactly like the ones Mother had made up for me. But they weren't like that yesterday. Oh, you must have searched for days to get them so exact. Oh, but I didn't. I... I I don't know what to say. You did get these drapes for me. Because I told you Mother had white drapes with a pattern of little blue bells. I I, I thought... Oh, Mrs. Lanning, you are a beautiful person. Stephanie, what color was the wallpaper in here? Do do you remember? Pale blue. Yes, to pick up the color of the blue bells. Pale blue. Mm -hmm. That would be right, I guess. But these walls are a dingy gray... Weren't they gold last week? They were. But, Stephanie, the next time you come, I promise you, they'll be pale blue. Are you ready to turn in, honey? No, Tom, no. I just want to read a little bit longer. Steph, things are okay, aren't they? Okay? Well, I mean about the move to New York. You're you're not too unhappy. Oh, Tom, I'm not unhappy at all. I feel as though I've come home. I know we've had trouble finding the right house, but I have a feeling this weekend... No, we'll find it. Yeah. I've been thinking about those visits you've made out to Crestwood. Would you want to live there? In my old house? Oh, no, never. But you seem so drawn to it. Well, I mean, it's a nice place to visit, but I wouldn't want to live there. Uh (laughs) No. Oh, Mrs. Lanning was sweet to put up the drapes like I had as a child, and now she even wants to change the wallpaper, but I don't want that, Tom. I want our own place, brand new, for us alone. Mm Mm-hmm. And the kids. (laughs) And the kids. I can hardly wait. Well, neither can I. (laughs) Okay, I'll see you for breakfast. Yeah, I wouldn't miss it. Good night, honey. Good night. Oh. Oh, where was I? Here we are. Roger leaned across the table. Uh-huh. Lois, please come with me, he says. Mm-hmm. I can't. Off. Mm-hmm. Oh. I don't want to read anymore. I'm going to go to bed. Mm-hmm. What? Mm-hmm. What's that? Yes. I'll come back. I'll come. Of course. Don't worry, I'll be there. You know I'll be there. Stephanie. Huh? What are you talking about? 
talking. I wasn't talking. I was reading. Well, Steph, I, I heard you talking in here. No, I wasn't. I mean, maybe I was reading out loud and you didn't know it. Look, why don't you come to bed? Oh, I will in a, in a minute or two. Okay, but I, I think maybe you've read enough. You're starting to dream out loud. Well, I'll be there in a minute. Yes. Yes, I hear you. And I'll come back. I'll come back. Hello, Mrs. Lanning. Stephanie, you said that I could come to visit whenever I wanted. Oh, of course. Come in. I hope I'm not bothering you. I mean, coming all the time like I do. Oh, no, I like your visit. I brought something with me today. Look. Why, what a beautiful doll. <laughs> I was unpacking one of the barrels and I found her. I always loved Miranda. That's her name. Miranda. I've known her for such a long time. And she's so beautiful. <laughs> Why don't we put Miranda in your room? That's where she belongs, isn't yes, it? Yes, of course. Up in my room. And she'll look so nice in there. Just the way she always did. I always kept Miranda on the bed. Like this. Stephanie, could you... Could you call me Mother. Mama? Yes, Mama. Mama was tall and young, and she had brown hair and such blue eyes. I have blue eyes. And such a smile. Mama was happy all the time. I could be happy if only... Mama had brown hair. Stephanie, look at my hair. Look at my... Mama loved to sing, too. She taught me many songs. My hair is brown, when we're together in this room, it's any color I want it to be. This is my room. Yes, it's your room. It's always been your room. Your room with the drapes of bluebells, the blue wallpaper, and now Miranda. It's your room because it wants you. It remembers you. And for the first time in my life, I feel I belong somewhere. Here. In this room with you. Sing to me, Mama. Yes. Yes, I will. London Bridge is falling down, falling down, falling down. London Bridge is falling down, my fair lady. Women caught in the spell of a room, or the spell of love. A woman who never had a daughter, a girl whose mother was taken from her at an early age. They both found something in this room. But the relationship goes far beyond their mortal feelings, and far beyond anything you might imagine. You'll see what I mean when I return shortly with Act Three. This is WBBM Chicago. Let's return now to Stephanie Miller, who paid an innocent visit to the house of her childhood and now feels strangely drawn to her old room. Right now, however, she's in the New York Hotel where she and her husband Tom are staying until they can find a house of their own. And at the moment, they're not seeing eye to eye on the forthcoming obligation. Steph, we have to go. Why? Well, it's company politics. Mr. Ames expects it. Oh, Mr. Ames, Mr. Ames. It's always what Mr. Ames thinks. Well, look, he's my boss. Well, I'm fed up with company parties and... But it's part of the sacrifice, and there'll be lots more when I get to be vice president. All right, all right, Tom. It's important to your career. I know that. Steph, look... You always enjoyed parties and, and entertaining. I just dread a big dinner party. Having to talk to all those people. Well, it never bothered you before. All right, Tom. I said I'd go to the party. I'm just saying I'm not going to enjoy it. Now, look. Go out and buy yourself the best dress you can find. 
Maybe that'll make you feel different. Why, Stephanie, what a surprise. I hope you don't mind my coming without calling again. But no, of course not. Come in. Okay. Because I, I, I have something to show you. Oh, looks like a dress box. Yeah, it is. It's my new dress. It's for the party. Come on. Come on up to my room. I can't wait to show it to you. <laughs> I haven't been to a party in such a long time. Oh, I hope you like my new dress. I picked it out all by myself. Oh, Stephanie, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's my first formal. Oh, I'm so excited. Imagine me in a formal. Try it on. Let me see. Okay, I will. There were uh, two of them in the store, and, and, and I liked them both, but I had a hard time choosing between them. You think I picked the right one? Of of course you did. Why, well, nothing could be prettier than this. You really like it? I do. Look, I like the way it swirls. Watch, see? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope my date likes it. His name is Tom. And is he groovy? He'll be the proudest boy there. Yeah, and I'll bet Virginia will be so jealous. Because her mother is making her dress. And her old date doesn't even have a car. Now, you shouldn't act that way with a friend, Oh, you're Stephanie. always saying things like that. No, really. I like Virginia okay, but I'm glad that I've got a new store-bought dress and a date with a car. Hey, i got to get out of this thing and run. Where are you off to now? Well, see, there's this new record i got to get, and I promised Virginia I'd bring it over. So, uh, uh, will you be an angel and hang this up for me? Yes, of course. Oh, no, wait a minute. Put it back in the box. i got to take it with me. Well, whatever you say. Oh, I'm so glad you like the dress. It's lovely, Stephanie. And I appreciate your coming so far to show it to me. Well, it's fun to share things with people we like. I really dread going to that party, though. Well, in that dress, you'll be the hit of the evening. And that'll make you feel different. Come on, Steph. We're late already. I'm ready. I just have to straighten this belt. Oh, you want help? No. Yeah, that does it. How do you like it? Oh, it's... It's pretty. Just pretty? <laughs> well, the style, it's, it's a little young for you, isn't it? Well, you mean young for me. You sound as though I was over 40. Well, look, I, I don't know anything about women's styles. It's pretty, it is. Well, you don't like my dress. I'm not going to go to the party. Honey, I like it. I like I it. I don't believe you. You're just saying that. Now, please, what's the matter? We've got to get going. Mr. Ames hates ready when to be late. Oh, Mr. Ames, Mr. Ames. Yeah, Mr. Ames. Stephanie, what's the matter with you? What? What did I say? What, you're acting like a, a 12-year-old brat. Oh. First, I'm too old for the dress. Now I'm a 12-year-old brat. Tom, have you been drinking? No. Should I ask the same of you? Don't be silly. You know I don't drink. Steph, were you out to the Crestwood place again? Yes. I wanted to show Mrs. Lanning my dress. Oh. Why? What do you mean, why? Because every time you've come back from there, you've acted strangely. I mean, what goes on up there in that house? Nothing. Nothing. We just have tea and talk. Well, look. I don't want you going there anymore. Besides, you're going to be too busy entertaining when we get our own place. Now, come on. We've got to go. Mrs. Miller, a pleasure to meet you at last. <laughs> How do you do, Mr. Ames? Uh, we're very fond of Tom at Connecticut Paper. With us only a month, and already I can tell he's executive material. Well, that's uh, nice of you to say, Mr. Ames. Oh, that's nonsense. You're on your way up. And I can tell after meeting Mrs. Miller, you have the last and most important asset. A charming wife and hostess. Oh, I wouldn't be where I am without her. <laughs> oh, come on now, gentlemen. You're going to turn my little old head. <laughs> <laughs> well, go on. Enjoy yourselves. Dance. And I'll chat with you later. Go ahead. <laughs> well, dance, Steph. All right. So, what do you think of Mr. Ames? Well, he's very nice. He's forceful. I can see that. Oh, yes. He knows what he wants. Uh-huh. And he seems to want you. Well, look, I'm grateful. It's my big break. Tom, maybe New York was the right thing. Oh, I know it was. <laughs> hey, Steph, have you been on a diet or something? On a diet? Me? Yeah. You seem so much lighter and smaller. I, I can feel it. <laughs> no, I haven't been on any diet. And I'm not losing any weight. 
You just haven't danced with me lately. How would you know? Uh, sorry to cut in, Tom, but the evening's almost over, and I haven't had the pleasure with Stephanie. Oh, <laughs> of course, of course, Mr. Ray. Uh, last dance, Stephanie? I'd be charmed, Mr. Ames. <laughs> I think a lot of Tom, Stephanie. I'm delighted to have him with the farm. Well, I know he's happy there, Mr. Ames. Really, he's finally found, well, fulfillment in his career with you. That's nice to know. I've had my eye on him, and I know he's going places to coin a cliche. (laughs) (laughs) And with you by his side, you can't miss. (laughs) You see, Stephanie... Man in Tom's position has to have a wife who can meet people, entertain, on the spur of the moment. You might have to have 12 guests for dinner without notice and not bat an eye. Tom will be traveling a lot, out of town for weeks at a time. What are you saying, Mr. Ames? Well, when a man as bright as Tom wants to get ahead, take sacrifice. Sacrifice of home and wife, I'm afraid. My Martha put up with it. I rest is all. And look where I am. At the top. Entertaining lots of people. Being without Tom for weeks, that's what this job means, doesn't it? I'm afraid so, Stephanie. But I know you're up to it. No, I'm not up to it. I don't want to be alone. Oh, Tom. Tom, I don't want to have to leave again. Stephanie, well, what is it? I want to be where I belong. Where I'm warm and safe. I've got to be there forever. Stephanie. I'll be there, yes. I'm coming back. Stephanie, where are you going? I'm going home. I'm going home. I'm going home. What's the matter, Helen? Oh, nothing. Why? Uh, quiet as usual. It's the rain, I suppose. I always feel depressed when it rains. Ellen, I've been meaning to ask you, uh, have you been dyeing your hair? <laughs> dyeing my hair? <laughs> Whatever for? Well, it looks darker than usual. You've been gray for years, but suddenly there's a brown streak in there. Oh, you're imagining things, Will. Oh, I'm the same plain Jane I've always been. Somehow, it looks different. You really think so? Well, maybe it is my imagination. Oh, I'll get it. Hello? Uh, Hello, is is this Mrs. Lanning? Yes? Uh, Mrs. Lanning, this is uh, Tom Miller, Stephanie's husband. Oh, yes. Is Stephanie there? Why, no. Well, she ran out from a party we were attending, said she was going home, but she's not at our hotel and no one's seen her. Oh, dear. If she does show up there, Mrs. Lanning, would you call me right away at the Imperial Hotel in the city? What makes you think she'll come here? She's very fond of you and that house. I I don't know what got into her, but she was apparently upset when she left the party. Oh, but it's such a night. It's pouring rain. I... I expect she'll turn up at the hotel. I hope so, but please let me know if she comes to you. Oh, yes, I will. At the Imperial. Good night, Mr. Miller. What the devil was all that about? Stephanie's husband. What? He thought she might be here. He can't find her. You've been letting that woman in here all along? I've grown fond of her will, and it is her room. Was, you mean? Now, I'm putting a stop to the... How did you get in here? Through the back door. I always come in the back door. Well, you just... I'm going up to my room now. I'm going to my room. I don't feel very well. Good night. What's the matter with her? Will, I'm warning you. Stay right here. You stay here and don't say anything or do anything. And I mean that. I don't want to go to Chicago. I want to stay here. You don't have to go, Stephanie. You can stay here with me. But they say I have to go. 
and live with Aunt Louise. Not anymore. You can stay here. I can't. Yes. Miranda, do you hear that? Oh, Miranda, you bad doll. Your face is all dirty again. I'll have to give you another bath. You naughty girl. Later, dear. Rest now. Yes, it's time to rest, Miranda. Uh, goodbye, baby. In treetop. Helen, what's going on in there? Go away, Will. Don't open that door. Pray go, Will. Uh, <laughs> God, you're here, Miss Miller. Mr. Lanning, thanks for calling me. I got a cab up from the city. I've been watching for you. I don't know what's going well, on. Never, well, never. Where's Stephanie? Well, come on. Follow me. Hush, dear. Time to put Miranda to bed. Ah. You've had a busy day. <laughs> and tomorrow... Mother's going to put up new curtains, uh, white with little blue bells. Yeah. We're saying goodbye to the pink bunny rabbits. <laughs> There's my big girl. Stephanie! Stephanie! Helen! It's Stephanie's husband. Open the door, Helen! Look, what is going on in there? Uh, I'm uh, going to find out. On the tree yeah. when the wind Good Lord. Where's Stephanie? <laughs> it's it, uh, not possible. Where is Stephanie? Uh, uh, she, she, she must be. Oh, no. No. I'll admit that Stephanie's room was a bit unusual. But think about your old room in the old house you grew up in. Maybe it's waiting for you to return someday. Maybe even hoping. So if you should get the chance, why not go back and say hello? If you dare. In any case, I'll be back shortly. Ah, uh, to be young again. We all search for that fountain of youth. And so often we don't realize it's with us all the time. You're only as old or as young as you feel. Those years don't matter. It's how you think that counts. I hope you'll keep thinking of us and join us again. Our cast included Mercedes McCambridge, William Redfield, Mary Jane Higby, and Robert Dryden. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. She was a priestess in the Temple of Apollo at Delphi. And she fell in love with me. Hey, Pop Pop, you, you know the sun's getting hot out here. Maybe you ought to get in. Anyhow, you, you swallow a few grains and you go into a deep trance. And when you come to or wake up, it's hundreds of years later. Oh, rave on. Pop. Now, now make plans to break out, Augie. Quickly before they come for you. Go get your gold. Sure, get the gold. And then where do I hide? You can hide anywhere. A secluded spot, a, a cave, a forest, a, a desert. Yeah, great. And what do I do for chow? I'm trying to explain this, Augie. You don't eat. You don't drink. You're oblivious to cold, to heat, to rain, to, to snow. And in several hundred years, you come alive again. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs>